I love that. Joining us now from Denver, the governor of Colorado, John Hickenlooper. So as a Democrat, um, how do you assess President Trump's speech last night? Well, it was certainly a different tone than we've seen uh, before. And I think a, a welcome tone in that sense that he really did seem to be including people. Uh, there wasn't the attacks on the media as, as being an enemy of the people. He really did seem like around uh, job creation and uh, even immigration, uh, which he amplified today, but that he, I mean, he, it looked like he was reaching out to people that maybe he didn't agree with and, and it, uh, encouraging them to kind of join him at the table and, and begin negotiating some of these issues. You know, I think if the president is, is going to honor the complexity of these issues and, you know, the core values that so many of us hold dear, I think, you know, I think we're ready to sit down and, and, and work on those issues. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's best for the country if you do. But it's interesting because um, it sounds like you thought he gave a pretty good speech last night. Would that be accurate? Yeah, I think the tone, well, again, there, there wasn't a lot of detail. Not specific. Uh, right. Yeah, the tone was very different than anything we've seen. Uh, and I think that's, you know, welcome. I mean, the, the level of, of volatility that we've seen up until now uh, I mean, I don't see how it's sustainable. So, and hopefully, you know, hopefully this will mark the beginning of a new consistency well, we'll that see. we can really get down right. to work on these issues, right? Now, you just heard the vice president who was adamant that uh, there's not going to be really any pathway to citizenship for um, illegal aliens who are here and have not been uh, causing trouble while they're here. Um, however, um, there are going to be crackdowns on sanctuary cities, Denver being one of them, uh, the capital of Colorado. Now, are you fearful that, that you'll lose some federal money, and how will you rebut that if it de indeed does happen? Well, I don't think so. I think, you know, if, if somebody commits a crime in Denver and they don't have uh, proper documentation, uh, generally, and there, I know there have been some screw-ups on this, but generally that, that name goes immediately over to ICE. Uh, and so you don't have a problem with cooperating with ICE as the governor of Washington State does, for example? Well, if you're talking about violent criminals, absolutely. I think that's, you know, part of the whole immigration thing is the, the system is so challenging. And maybe this is the time that we can actually get Congress to, you know, find the compromises. And, of course, securing the border. I mean, you know, border, countries come with borders. There's no question about that. But we also have to make sure that we get... You know, that we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, that we, you know, that we have an ID system that works. But at the same time, yeah, and the we vice president that a lot of these guys have that. jobs. Finally, uh, Jeff Sessions, new attorney general, not a fan of legalized marijuana. Roll the tape on that. <laughs> I, as you know, am dubious about marijuana. As states, I get, can pass whatever laws they choose, but I'm not sure we're going to be a better, healthier nation that if uh, we have uh, marijuana being sold at every corner grocery store. So uh, he says, uh, the attorney general does, that federal law overrides state law, and uh, he's not going to be nearly as liberal as uh, the attorney generals under President Obama. Have you thought about that, and how do you react? <laughs> Well, certainly we've been thinking about it and trying to figure out what our choices are. You know, I opposed it. Right? I, I was openly against it. And, you know, 55 to 45, our voters put it into our Constitution. I took a solemn oath to support our Constitution. And so I'm in that funny position where I've got to try and make this work. And, you know, we've made a lot of progress. You've got to admit the old system was a train wreck. So now we're actually, we, we have anecdotal evidence, and I think soon numerical evidence, that drug dealers are, there are less drug dealers on the streets, and they don't care who they sell to, Yeah, right? but you know what? You didn't see a spike. You know what did happen, though, interestingly enough, was that a flood of uh, homeless people and poor people came into Colorado um, because now they have easy access to the intoxicants. And I don't know how that's uh, impacting, but last time I was in Denver in September, uh, and I used to work there, you might know that, at Channel 7 in Denver. I noticed yeah. it. I noticed it. I mean, downtown well, Denver, there's a lot of people uh, that are just stoned morning till night because they can get this stuff. <laughs> that's not, I don't know. That's if, not and true. I think that's what the attorney general is talking about. To be clear, I mean, Colorado, U.S. News and World Report came out on Monday. We have the number one economy in the country. When you're growing that fast, you have all kinds of homelessness. Yeah, the, we had well, that long before we legalized marijuana. And every state that's got a growing economy right now, including Texas, has real challenges. But shouldn't there be more jobs? The economy's growing. There should be jobs. They shouldn't be homeless. You, look, you know that. If you want a service job in Denver, you can get it like that. But we don't have any evidence that this is the, the, the result of marijuana. There are a lot of other social issues that yeah. are around homelessness and, and